Ladies and gents, welcome to the reaction. This is how to terraform Venus quickly by the channel Cosgazat in a nutshell. Yeah, this is the recent video Cosgazat just uploaded. This is fun, right? I mean, terraforming topic. That the you know Mars thing, uh, you know, is pretty new right now. It's the, I guess you know it's the topic that everybody talks about. How you know Elon Musk thought of bombing uh, the you know. Uh, North Pole and South Pole, whatever, to, you know, melt the ice and, you know, terraform it that way. So terraforming other planets is a really hot topic right now. So, yeah, this is going to be a fun video. Leaving Earth to find new homes in space is an old dream of humanity and will sooner or later be necessary for our survival. The planet that gets the most tension is Mars, a small, toxic and energy-poor planet that just about seems good enough for a colony of depressed humans huddled in underground cities. But what if we think bigger? What if we take Venus, one of the most hostile and deadly places? Yeah, uh, the atmosphere is so hot that, you know, the, the, if the pizza could, could cook in just a few seconds or something like that. It's way too hot. Yeah. Deadly place in the solar system and turn it into a colony, not by building lofty cloud cities, but by creating a proper second Earth. It might be easier than you think. See, that's the thing that surprised me. The title has quickly in it. He's saying easier than you think. This is going to be a fun video because, you know, this is surprising to me. It's going to be easier. All right. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the reaction. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards or different places. Check out the end cards. And yeah, let's go this one. Leaving Earth to find new homes in space is an old dream of humanity and will sooner or later be necessary for our survival. The planet that gets the most attention is Mars, a small, toxic and energy poor planet that just about seems good enough for a colony of depressed humans huddled in underground cities. But what if we think bigger? What if we take Venus, one of the most hostile and deadly places in the solar system, and turn it into a colony? Not by building lofty cloud cities, but by creating a proper second Earth. It might be easier than you think. That's a surprising but easier, come on. Venus is by far the hottest planet in the solar system with a surface temperature of 460 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt lead. This heat is due to the most extreme greenhouse effect in the solar dioxide. system. CO2 is great at trapping heat, even a rise from 0.03% to 0.04% in Earth's atmosphere is heating up our planet right now. Venus's atmosphere is 97% CO2. Also, Venus's atmosphere is 93 times denser than Earth's. Standing on Venus's surface would feel like taking a dive about 900 meters deep into the ocean. The pressure would kill you instantly. Kill you? Uh, you know, Soviet Union launched a satellite there, uh, you know, basically uh, to, to, you know, capture what's uh, on the Venus and that. And it's, it didn't survive for long. And the picture was such bent, you know, bent away because the pressure is way too high. So that's how the picture was captured. Yeah. It's a truly horrible place. So why should we even bother? First and foremost, Venus is almost as big as Earth and has 90% of its surface gravity. Surface gravity is a big problem when colonizing the solar system because it's very likely that long stays in low gravity places will have negative health effects. Venus's size means it could be the second largest habitat in the solar system. Seriously, Venus is perfect if we can turn it into Earth because that, that would be such an easy transition to be. From going from Earth to Venus, it, it, it won't feel any different. I mean, it would be so awesome if we can turn Venus into Earth. A new home for billions of humans and trillions of animals with oceans, lush forests and a beautiful blue sky. A properly terraformed Venus may be the most pleasant place to live outside of Earth. While we can't exactly terraform Venus today, a slightly more ambitious future version of us could take this project on. It will take a few generations to complete and be a huge challenge like building the Great Pyramids was for our ancestors. But then, it's not like humans have never started projects that took more than a lifetime to complete. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah, that was when the kings and emperors and monarchs were in power. Not in a democracy, right? Because if you bring, uh, you know, a topic like, oh, there, here's a project that's going to last for, I guess, uh, you know, a few generations, few centuries, those politicians are going to be like, what? That long? 
I'm not going to be, you know, on the power for that long. I'm not going to be in office for that long. I don't care about that. Hell, if you bring any projects that last more than few decades, people are like, yeah, we don't have fun for that. Do you have anything that lasts four or five years? Because that I can talk about. So, you know, any long lasting project like that, I don't think it's going to get funded that easily. Do it. Before anything else, we need to cool Venus down and remove the gas that makes up the extremely heavy atmosphere. As mentioned, there's a lot of it. Around 465 million billion tons. How do we do that? There are a few options. We could create giant solar collectors powering a huge array of laser beams that heat up the atmosphere so much that it's blasted into space. Although we would need thousands of times the entire power generating capacity of humanity and it would still take thousands of years to remove the atmosphere. Another way is to sequester the atmosphere, binding the CO2 in different compounds through chemical reactions. We could mine elements like calcium or magnesium on Mercury and shoot them at Venus via mass driver systems, electric rails that make rockets unnecessary on smaller planets. The metals would combine to bind the CO2 into different carbonates basically forever. But the scale makes the whole thing impractical. Yeah, we would easy. need several hundred billion tons of material to sequester the CO2 this way. Seems like a waste of material and might take too long. An equally ridiculous idea that could actually work is to put Venus in the shade, literally. By constructing a huge mirror to blot out the sun to just freeze the atmosphere. The mirror doesn't need to be complex or massive, just a very thin foil with a little structural support. Building such a large flat surface so close to the sun will turn it effectively into a solar sail and push it out of position. So instead of one giant circular object, our mirror will consist of many different pieces. Annular slats of angled mirrors can reflect sunlight from one set of mirrors to the next. Mirrors would be angled, reflecting light from one to another until the light is redirected to the back, balancing the force on the front and holding them in position. After a few years of getting the infrastructure in place, things start slowly and then escalate. For the first few decades, the atmosphere slowly cools down but stays dense and deadly until after some 60 years, it reaches the critical temperature of 31 degrees Celsius. Suddenly, the great flood begins on Venus as CO2 turns to liquid at this pressure and begins to rain down. A constant global rainstorm of unbelievable proportions lasting 30 years. The pressure and temperature suddenly begin to drop in unison. For almost a century, puddles turn into lakes and oceans. The surface temperature is now minus 56 degrees Celsius and the pressure has dropped to only seven times the pressure on Earth. Finally, at a really unpleasant minus 81 degrees Celsius, the CO2 oceans begin to freeze and the rain turns into snow. This leaves us with a frozen Venus covered in oceans as hard as rock and gigantic CO2 glaciers. What remains of the atmosphere is mostly nitrogen at about three times Earth's surface pressure. If you don't mind freezing and suffocating, you can now take a stroll over Venus's surface. Yeah. But the frozen CO2 remains a bit of a problem. Seriously. At some point, we want to warm up the planet, but if we do, the CO2 ice will melt and fill up the atmosphere again. So we need some way to keep it from doing that. One is to simply cover it all with cheap plastic insulation yeah, and cover on. it up with ground up Venus rock or water oceans. Although some planetary scientists will be very stressed out about us building a new planet containing a potential time bomb like that. A few unfortunately timed volcanoes could melt a lot of CO2 at once and ruin everything. Another obvious solution is to shoot it all out into space and collect it into a small moon for storage. Yeah, same thing he talked about in the Mercury, shoot out things in the space. It's not that easy, see? I know, you know, this title is quickly and easier, but the technology he's proposing here, like shoot out that much material into the space, that is ridiculous amount of, you know, effort and resources you need to do that. That's a whole another level of technology. I don't think that's so easier. So uh, I thought, you know, he's going to propose some ridiculously simple uh, idea that would basically terraform Venus. But no, if, if it involves, uh, you know, some kind of a shooting thing that you have to shoot some matter into space like that. Yeah, it's not happening anytime soon because that technology is way far ahead. ...and future use. 
We can make this more efficient by using mass drivers instead of rockets, but moving all that mass will still be a pretty intense challenge that will take some time to solve. It's nearly Whatever impossible. Whatever we end up doing with the atmosphere, to move forward we need water, which we could get from ice moons. Europa, a moon of Jupiter, has twice as much water as Earth's oceans. Now, catching a moon and trans... Water is not uh, hard. You don't have to go to the moon. Just, you know, there are lots of asteroids with water. You can just slam those asteroids on Venus. Nobody's living on Venus right now when you're trying to terraform it. So just slam those asteroids on Venus. Who cares? The atmosphere now will have water. Transporting it through the solar system is not exactly easy. So instead, it might be easier to cut chunks of ice off Europa with an army of construction drones and shoot them at Venus using more of those mass drivers. Again, he with the mass drivers. Yeah, like I said, you know, slamming those asteroid on the on Venus basically makes better sense. Just deflect those asteroid in a way to set the trajectory towards the Venus. That's easier than this, you know, you know, mass drives like he's talking about here. Shooting things like that at that scale, it's not easy. If we can do that, we are pretty advanced species by then. So, yeah. Space tethers could save us a lot of effort and energy. There here. you go, space tethers. We made tethers. a whole video explaining how they work, yeah. but in a nutshell, they are slings that can take a payload on both ends. On your own, that could work. Yeah. If you're talking about some mass driver that just shoots matter just a few kilometers up, like 20, 30 kilometers up, and from there these skyhooks can, you know, slingshot it towards that, I mean, that would work. Because this skyhook thing is pretty simple, right? It's just simple hooks, tethers. But that works. I mean, it's one of the most basic things that NASA uses, using, you know, uh, things like this, basically using the gravitational force from the planets, from, you know, planets to planets to, you know, I guess, you know, get the speed that they want. So tethers works a similar way. Do most of the work needed to catapult our ice to Venus. Yeah. The it. ice hits the Venus tethers, which gently drop it into the atmosphere, where it falls down as snow. In exchange, the Venus tethers get to catch CO2 ice shot up from below and accelerate it into orbit. We can remove excess nitrogen using this same method to further lower our atmospheric pressure. After a few decades or centuries, Venus would be covered by a nice, shallow, frozen ocean a few hundred meters deep. It would look extremely different from today. A few continents and countless islands have formed. This is beginning to look a bit like our planet. Now the last and most magnificent phase of terraforming begins. Yeah, see, <clears throat> uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, I think, said once, like, if you have power to terraform me Venus, Mars, whatever, then you have power to terraform Earth. I mean, that is true, right? People are talking about terraforming Mars into making it into Earth. If that's the case, you know, if the global warming is such an issue here, terraform the Earth. Because if you can terraform Earth of all places, Venus of all places, you can terraform Earth. But then again, other side of me thinks that if we want to use this technology and to see if we can terraform other planets, I mean, it's not on and off switch whether we can terraform it or we can't. It's not like that. You know, test out the technology. Does it work or doesn't? Doesn't it? So basically, we have to first terraform Venus, terraform Mars to see if it works or not. We don't want to test it here because we could make things worse. So I guess if terraforming Mars and Venus first before trying out that technology on Earth is necessary, I guess. Making the atmosphere breathable and adding life. First, we need light though, and we need to heat the planet up again. A Venus day is 2,802 hours long, more than 116 Earth days. So if we just remove our giant mirror, we would grill half of our planet. Even without the massive atmosphere, temperatures would reach unbearable levels. The simplest way to create a day-night cycle and let some energy in again is with another set of mirrors to illuminate our continents and melt our water oceans, which would let us completely control how much energy we get and where it goes. The atmosphere is now mostly made up of nitrogen and basically devoid of oxygen. So the first inhabitants will likely be trillions and trillions of cyanobacteria, which can get photosynthesizing and release oxygen. Oh, yeah. We know that they can quickly turn around the atmosphere of a planet because billions of years ago they were probably responsible for turning the toxic atmosphere of our young Earth into an atmosphere with enough oxygen for more complex animal life. But not only that, cyanobacteria can fix nitrogen from the atmosphere and turn it into nutrients that can be used by living beings. 
This way, they will essentially fertilize our dead ocean water and prepare it for more complex organisms. On land, our colonists need to grind down some of the former Venusian surface to make soil for nitrogen-fixing plants to grow on. Eventually, billions of trees would spread, creating large forests covering massive parts of the continents. Venus would turn green. To speed things up, CO2 would be strategically released to supply the plants and cyanobacteria. Areas already covered with plants could get extra daylight from our orbital mirrors, so the plants would be active for most of each day. Maybe we won't have to do this with the same plants and animals we know today. As genetic engineering matures and our understanding of genetics and the machinery of life expands, we might just engineer life as we need it. Yeah. All in all, it would take several thousand years to make the atmosphere breathable by humans. In the meantime, you could stroll around with nothing more than regular clothes and an oxygen mask. Settlers would enjoy a vast new planet filled with resources and bathed in sunlight. They might think of new ways to use the vast amounts of carbon dioxide ice and nitrogen orbiting in space above. Industrial processes, rocket fuel, or even boosting the terraforming of another planet like tiny Mars. Venus is fully terraformed. Animals roam through vast ecosystems. Cities are being constructed. Billions of settlers and their descendants make this world their home. They will see images of the past, how Venus was once the most hostile planet around, how it took... Yeah, I think quickly is a strong word here. One day when we have technology, maybe this is a long, long project. I don't know, this, feels, this all feels like, a, you know, just thing that we think of, but I don't think it's going to happen for a long, long time. Yeah, it's. A, I think we'll we'll be able to terraform Mars first, then we'll terraform Venus because, you know, Venus being that much chaotic, you know, yeah, doing all this will require time. I'm pretty sure there's much easier answer to terraform Mars than terraform Venus. Hundreds of years to freeze hell and to ship in the oceans, and another few thousand years to make it possible to breathe freely. They will barely be able to believe it. Okay. Maybe it's not that easy to terraform Venus, and a lot of things must go right for this future to become reality. But it is possible, and with technology that is within the reach of a motivated and slightly more advanced humanity that wants to venture into space. The only thing that's stopping it is our imagination, and that at least is a problem that's easy to overcome. If you think about it, your imagination is the only thing stopping you from doing all kinds of things. All you need is a little nudge, and we might just have the right thing to get you started. We are big fans of Skillshare. And yeah, people, go to Skillshare.com for us, because Gazard in a nutshell, some things. Go to the original video page link and support, support them from there, I guess. Uh, yeah, terraforming Venus quickly. This surprised me when I saw the title, like, damn, there is an answer that quickly we can just terraform now. But no, in the future, we might be able to do that. And all those, you know, all the small details, like shooting all that matter into space. The logistics behind that is way too big. You know, transforming all those matter and shooting it into space is no joke. I mean, lots of people just say, you know, all this trash that we have on our planet that's a bigger issue let's shoot it to the sun yeah it's not so easy just like that shooting all this matter into the space is not going to be so easy so yeah quickly is a strong word here but maybe one day who the hell knows why not maybe one day we'll be able to do it but i feel like mars is much easier than venus because venus is already way too chaotic mars is not chaotic like that so maybe Right, people, that was how to terraform Venus quickly by the channel because in a nutshell. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the weeks Sunday, there's a link in the description, check out the cause of playlist like because in a nutshell. I have to quite a few, you know, videos from this channel already. So check out the playlist, it's all there. Check out the playlist too, like Inter Historian, CGP Grey, uh, Oli Sakashi Proxon, History. And yeah, I'll see you next time.